Hello, welcome to this series of videos on the indefinite integral. This is the fourth in the series. We finally introduced to the indefinite integral and we've seen the definite integral before. There'll be a, an entire series just on that. The symbol for the indefinite integral, however, is different. We don't have limits of integration. And this is just doing what we had looked at in the previous videos. It's asking you to find the antiderivative of the function that's on the inside. That's it, in a different format. So we want to rephrase our pre, we did, we did uh, three or four examples, and we are now going to just rephrase those in the terms of an indefinite integral. Remember how we found the antiderivative of eight? Said it was eight x plus c. Well, now it could be posed in this phrasing where we have an integral of eight dx, an indefinite integral. 8x plus c. Integral of that quadratic. We found the antiderivative of that already. Integral of that trig. We found that one. And then we have this one as well. And so we can phrase these in the framework of an indefinite integral. Find the antiderivative. That's what it's asking. Okay, great. So then what we can do is, you know, on the very first video on this set of videos the slide was looking at here's a function here's its derivative well now we can do that backwards here's an indefinite integral who is it the indefinite integral of okay so who who is the who is this k k is a constant who is k the derivative of k is the derivative of kx plus c okay who is x to the n the derivative of x to the n is the derivative of x to the n plus 1 over n plus 1 plus c. And I like to call that the reverse power rule. Okay. But it's good as if n is any real number not equal to negative 1, though. Can't have that. <laughs> you'll, have, you'll be dividing by 0. Um, but what happens when it is negative 1, though? We'll just rewrite it. You know, negative 1, x to negative 1 is 1 over x. What function has 1 over x as its derivative? Natural log of x. All right. Technically, we need absolute value bars in there, but there we go. <laughs> All right, great. Uh, e to the x. What function has e to the x as its derivative? E to the x plus c. What about a to the x? Well, a to the x divided by natural log of a. Okay, great. Cosine x. Sine x. Sine x. Negative cosine x. Secant squared x. Tangent x. Okay. Hyperbolic cosine. Hyperbolic sine. Hyperbolic sine. Hyperbolic cosine. No negative involved with the hyperbolic trig functions. All right. You're doing great. Doing great. 1 over 1 plus x squared. What function has 1 over 1 plus x squared as its derivative? Arctan of x. Okay. Other inverse trig functions. This guy's arc sine. And when there's a negative on there, it's arc uh, cosine. But, but this is good enough right here. These are the indefinite integral of common functions. Okay. Now I'm going to take these and alter them slightly. Not to the point where we actually need another technique. Uh, we are going to develop another technique that would be good for answering this next set of questions. But I don't want you to have to do it with that technique. It's called substitution. I don't want you to have to do these with substitution. Let's just do this with the power of our brain. We know that the function that has cosine x as its derivative is sine of x. What's the, what's the k multiplier going to do for you? You would think it'd be sine of kx. But then let's work this the other way. What is the derivative of the sine of kx? The chain rule would bring a k in. It'd be cosine of kx, but it'd be times k. Well, there's no k, you know, in any of this. So what we need to balance out that k that's going to come in from the chain rule, we need a 1 over k. All right, great. How is sine of kx? It should be cosine of kx. Negative cosine of kx. But we need that 1 over k factor. 
All right? And you can check it out, you know, just do it. The derivative of the right-hand side should be the left-hand side, what's inside the integral. Okay? Uh, e to the kx. Should be e to the kx. 1 over k. All right. And then we have these uh, last few here. This looks like a natural law, like, you know. But the multiplier on the x is in a. So chain rule would bring that a in there, so 1 over a. I don't know why I didn't. Why didn't I keep it as a K? Sorry, it's an A. Same thing. Though. So K's and A's, they're all constants here. C's, they're constants, if I didn't state that already. B, B's constant. <laughs> all right. And you can just get these quickly. You don't have to do some other technique. It's just your intuition saying, of course, it's going to be this other guy, but I need this dividing factor. Okay. This looks like an arctan. Right, if the a is, if a is one, that's an arctan. That's arctan's antiderivative. I mean, that's arctan's derivative right there. So doing the antiderivative, we get arctan. But actually, there's a little twist on it, a little shift on it. We'll have to do, and so it's the arctan of x over a. And I can show you the algebra if you like. Um, but I just read whether you just just know this, you know, instead of having to um, use the substitution to find this. It comes up so often in one of our uh, one of the techniques later when we learn how to in uh, integrate more functions. Um, the uh, the technique is, uh, that we use is partial fractions, and this this comes up a lot, and um, the, the the previous one as well. And you shouldn't have to do a substitution to to do that in the middle of another technique. So I recommend just having it down. And then with the um, the radical, uh, that's, that looks like an arc sign, but it's not. Okay, this one the uh, the one over a is actually not a part of the the multiplier out front. It's still a part of the inside though. And just check it for yourself. Take the derivative of the right hand side. You'll get the left hand. You get, you'll get what's in the, what's inside the integral. All right. Well, thank you for watching this series on the indefinite integral. We're getting our, uh, we're getting warmed up trying to figure out how to work this process in reverse. The definite integral and the fundamental theorem of calculus is what's coming next. Uh, in the next series, you'll be um, you'll be looking at looking at that and trying to figure out what are the uh, what is the in what what is a definite integral? What are you measuring? What are some of the properties of it? And then from there, we'll have the fundamental theorem of calculus and, and help us to find the, uh, find the result exactly and not have to guess. All right. Thank you for watching. My name is Nakaya Rimmer. Uh, my website is calcoach.com. Please uh, like and subscribe. Uh, comment down below. And um, thank, thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next video or the next series of videos. Take care.